boys and girls, this video is for Tuesday, April 28th. Okay, so first we're going to start with our reading book, Twister on Tuesday. So you're going to be reading chapter 5 today, and you're going to be writing two problems that Jeb has. Now, if you come to Zoom, we will talk about this. But he actually had a problem last chapter in chapter 4. You might notice there was something he was struggling with. And then there's something in chapter 5, a problem that Jeb has also. Now, you don't need to worry about leaving space to solve the problem because in this booklet, all we're doing is writing the problem. And then next week, we're going to do something a little different to finish the book. Okay, for spelling today, we're on sort 30, and you're going to be writing your spelling words on your bingo card. Now, get it done today so that tomorrow morning, Wednesday, on Zoom, we're going to play this. The other thing I'd like you to do is see if you can get some kind of markers. You know how we use the little yellow and red markers. If you can use Cheerios or Legos or something, bring those with you because then maybe we can play more than once because if you exit out, then we can't play more than once. Now, if you're not able to come to Zoom, you can play this at home with somebody. So for our handwriting today, we're going to be doing page 65, day 2, and we're going to be doing the letter U. So remember, you're using your pencil, tilting your book. You're going to start by making a little curve, go down, up, straight down, connect. So the uppercase letter will be connected. The lowercase letter is very similar, but you're going to start as if you're coming from another letter. So let's say you're coming from the H in humble. You would start your U, and then you make a U, and connect it. So now for math, we're going to be on page 645, talking about inches. Now, this is where you need your inch ruler. So you need to look and see if it has inches on it. If you don't have a ruler, I've included a paper ruler. So all you do is cut it out. And I did this on the copy machine. It may not be exact, but it's close enough to practice if you don't have a regular ruler in your house. So the inch side is going to be the bigger side. So I'm going to go ahead and use this paper ruler right now so you see what it's like. Okay, so the inch side is this bigger side. It says inch. On my wooden ruler, it actually doesn't say the word inch, but the inches are the ones about the size of your thumb. So you are going to measure these items on the page. So just measure. If it's not exact, you're going to go to the nearest inch. Now on this ruler, it does not start at the very end. Do you see this line right here? That's the zero. So I have to move it over so it's like that. And this is about two inches. So I'm going to put two. It already says inches. So I'm going to measure all these items. Now this is not exactly six inches, but that's the closest. So I'm going to put six inches. So I'm going to measure all these items. Now, when I get to the next page, you're going to actually have to find the items and measure real life items. So, uh, let's see. First, you're going to put your ruler down and don't look at it, and you're going to guess how much these items are. So, you're going to get a chalk box. Well, you, it doesn't have to be a chalk box. Some kind of box, like a crayon box, Something like that. I'm trying to figure out what I have in this classroom. And a lunch box. If you don't have these items, find something similar and you can write what you measured. So hold on okay, and let me get So the something. closest thing I could find to a crayon box or a chalk box was this stapler box, which is fine. Uh, if, if it's not the exact same thing, that's okay, but put what it is. So first of all, I'm going to estimate about how many inches this is, putting it the same way as the other box. So I think this is maybe about two inches across. So I'm going to put two inches, and then I'm going to take the ruler, and I'm going to measure it. Okay, it's actually a little bit more than two, but two is the closest. Now when you're looking at the, ru the ruler, can you see... There's all these different marks, and you're probably saying, why are all these different marks? We'll learn about that. Like... Um, this, this one is, would be half an inch because it's not quite there, but these, these longer ones right here on this ruler are where the inches are. Now, it's a little confusing sometimes because the number is not exactly right there. Let's look at this ruler. This ruler is maybe a little easier to read because the long line goes with the number. 
Okay, so the closest thing would be two inches. I was right. Now, if I was wrong, I'm not going to change the estimate. Estimate is you're learning how to make a good guess. So you, if you're wrong, that's okay. You're not in trouble. Okay, so for the next one is a lunchbox. So I got my lunchbox here. Let me see. Maybe if I put it there, can you see? How about if I do it on this side? Okay, I have to guess about, I think that's about as long as a ruler. So I'm going to guess that that's 12 inches. Okay, that's my estimate. Now I'm going to take my ruler and, oh, it's not quite 12 inches. I would say it's closer to 11 inches. So I was a little bit off, but that was a pretty good estimate. So that's what I'm going to do on both these pages. I'm going to find these items or something close to it, and I'm going to first estimate. Don't cheat and measure where it says estimate, please. Guess. It's okay because we want to get better at guessing. Then measure. All of these are inches. And on this page, you're going to read the questions and do them. So for our next activity, you're going to go on your computer and you're going to listen to a song about gratitude that I picked out for you. And you might be saying, well, our character counts trait is not gratitude this month. Why are we listening to gratitude? We're supposed to be talking about fairness. Well, gratitude is something that they've actually done a lot of scientific studies on. And if you're grateful, you're going to be happier and healthier. Also, um, there's some people that in your life that hopefully you're grateful for that right now maybe they have some things kind of unfair happening to them. They have to stay home and maybe they're lonely or maybe they're, they don't have a really great situation uh, of what's going on with them. At least you can be grateful that you're not by yourself, you're living with your family and you have uh, people to help you out. So maybe you can reach out to some of those other people like your grandparents or maybe even the people in your own house. You know what? Maybe they need a little cheering up too. So I want you to think about some people that you're grateful for and I want you to write somebody a postcard. Now I've given you several postcards. So uh, they're white and then I just, I colored them in. You don't really have to color the whole thing. You can color it how you want. So I'm just showing you some that I did. Everybody got different postcards. So you might have the ones I'm showing you and you might want have different ones. Now some of you might be looking at this one and going like, what in the world does this mean? This means I love you infinity. And this is the infinity symbol. And infinity means forever and ever and ever without stopping. Okay, so there's three that say I love you infinity. And so maybe those could be for someone who's in your family because it talks about I love you. Okay, and then some of them are just, hi, how you doing? So you're going to choose somebody to send a postcard to. If you want to do all of them, that's totally fine. But you're required to do one. Now, you really need to give this to somebody. So you're going to have to take a picture of it, unless you're giving it to me or someone at school. If you want to give it to someone at school, remember last week Mrs. Moore was talking about uh, our, li our librarian, Mrs. Prest, and thanking her. If you haven't done that, you could write it for her, or you could write it for someone at school. You could write, write one to one of your care youth coaches. You could write it to your grandparents or someone that you haven't seen for a while. You could write it to your parents. Anyway, your choice of who you write it to. But uh, please take a picture if it's not going to be sent back to school. Now, so first thing is color it. Now I'm going to come to the table and show you, remind you how to write a postcard. Remember we got all these postcards for Flat Stanley? Those people knew how to write a postcard, probably because they learned it at school. Let's go learn about a postcard. So no matter which postcard you choose, I've printed the back the same. So on the back, if you're mailing it to someone, your stamp is going to go right here. And you need to get that from your parents. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to put the person's first and last name here. First and last name here, if you're mailing it. And you're going to put their address and your city, state, and zip code, all of that here. Parent is going to have to help you if you're mailing it. We did this at the beginning of the year. Uh, let me just write what it is. So it's first and last name. Now, it's important that you put your first and last name, even if that's not what you call them. Let's say you were, you were writing this to your grandparents. So you're going to put, we call one of our grandparents Nana. We call the other grandparents Grandma Bev. But if I just put Nana and there's a problem with the post office delivering it, how do they know who that person is? But if I put her actual name, then I've actually gotten mail that, that there was a mistake in the address, but my mailman knew who we were. Okay? So first and last name, then you're going to put your address, 
not, I'm sorry, not your address, the address that you're sending it to. So it's going to be a number on a street. And if they live in an apartment or a condo, then it would be a number after that, like which, or maybe a letter. And then you're going to put the city that you're mailing it to, comma, California, or this might not be California. Sorry. My bad. It could be another state. Whatever the state is, you're going to put the abbreviation, and then you're going to put the zip code. The zip code is another number. Let your parents help you with that. Now, with a postcard, is a little different than a letter because it's super short. So, you can put the date up here. So, let's say it's today. You can put um, 42820, and you're going to put dear and then you're going to put whoever, comma. We do that in a letter, right? Now, this is going to be your body. This is the words you're going to write. Now, you might be thinking, what do I write? Well, tell them what you're doing. Tell them um, something you appreciate them, about them. Tell them something exciting that's happened. And I know you might say, well, nothing exciting is happening. But I bet you, you could tell them about that egg drop you did last week. That was pretty exciting. Uh, you can tell them how you're doing your school. You can tell them something you liked about it. You can tell them about something you did on the weekend. You can tell them about something you did during re for your recess activity. And then you're going to either put from or love, depending if it's a relative. You can put love. If it's not a relative, you can put from, comma, and then sign your name. Okay, so this is almost exactly like a letter, but it's just really short like that. Okay, now if you're writing to somebody at home, you could just put, let's say you were writing to to mom, okay? So you could just put mom. You don't have to write the address and you can just write the information here, okay? Now for your optional recess activity, I put the directions on how to build your own volcano. Now to do this, you need a, an empty water bottle. You need some vinegar and baking soda. Now in the directions, it shows you how to build dirt around it and make it look like a volcano in your backyard or someplace, you don't have to do that part. The part for the volcano is the water bottle, the vinegar, and the baking soda. You can also use uh, food coloring if you want. Just when you do this, make sure you do it in a place where you're not going to make a mess and you clean it up when you're done. And remember, if you do any of the, these activities that you really like and you're proud of, go ahead and send us a picture so we can see them. Bye, guys.